Boxing King Media and Association with Box Row. I refer to you as legend because you come from a legendary school of boxing training. So, Mr. Sugar Hill, it's an honour to speak to you for the first time. Thank you very much. Nice to talk with you as well. It's a pleasure. So, you're in town. Obviously, yesterday we never got a chance to spoke because it was, it was crazy. Ben I, was in, I was waiting in a long queue for you yesterday and I just couldn't get through. So, I, I hunted you down today and here we are. Just for the record, it was the other way around. Your key was too big for me. But Ben Whitaker is joined your gym. We'll just quickly uh, go over that. What were the key things? You know, give me a couple of things that stood out for you and thought, you know what, I want to work with this young kid. Because I remember a few months ago you were saying, I think I'm done as well. Tyson's retired and I'm done as well. <laughs> well, I've seen, I've seen Ben Whitaker, I don't know, it's, it's sometime last year Tyson showed him to me. And he was just telling me about you know, this, this, this young talent in uh, Great Britain boxing, and we watched him on uh, YouTube and, and watched him after he uh, fought in the Olympics and how upset he was. And, you know, that, that caught my eye that he was upset about, you know, the decision and upset about uh, having a silver medal. And uh, it just showed a, lot, it showed a lot more in his personality that, that he wants to be better, he wants to be the best and not settling for less. And, uh, you know, without speaking about his skills, because we all know what skills he has, but he's got a great, great, reactionary time like just how to see punches and feel punches coming and uh, that's something special you can't teach that no you can't one of the things I picked up yesterday he specifically said he wants knockouts and he thought oh best yeah he said knockouts and obviously Sugar Hill's a guy to deliver knockouts you as your recent right place. I must be in the right place I want I want knockouts you know for my fighters and he wants knockouts so uh, yeah I guess we're, uh, we're joined up and linked up right now to, uh, to get some knockouts I, I, I love the idea it's, uh, it would have been something that I would have been pushing for him in the first place. It would have been, let's settle you down a little bit, keep your speed, but let's just work on uh, getting that power transfer. I don't want to say too much. I'm just like getting that power transfer from the knuckles to the jaw. Well, one of the things uh, that I pick up from his amateur fights is that he likes people coming on to him. And obviously, you know yourself in the pro game, more than likely his first few opponents might be guys that are backing off. So how will he adapt with that and how would you work with that? get out there and knock them out so they ain't got nowhere to back to no more. They're backing off enough to just back them into the ropes. Then you could, uh, where else are going to go then? Valid point. Um, and, and then with regards to obviously Ben's uh, development as well, are you looking to like train him in the UK or is it going to be US based or is it going to be a mixture of both? That's like the three million dollar question everybody's asking me but uh, my answer is still the same. We're, we'll train anywhere. We'll train wherever he's going to fight at. That's the only thing that makes sense. It's not actually training in the, in, the, in the U.S. and then fighting in the U.K. It doesn't make sense. The, the things that are going to make sense is wherever he's fighting at is where we're training at. Uh, yesterday, you were there. We trained in the tunnel. We trained on one of those James Bond sets uh, where they make all the fancy uh, gadgets and stuff. I was looking for Austin Martin down there to see if, uh, you know, maybe take that for a spin. It was a random place. So I'm hoping as a boxing fan you'll be training him alongside Tyson as Tyson prepares for his next fight and you can train them both together in Morecambe Bay. I don't mind training in Markham. I don't know what you're talking about when you're saying about Tyson fighting and things like that. That's been uh, established and, and recorded and, and, and uh, put into the database that Tyson Fury is retired. So. I thought you might slip up there. Just a quick one on Tyson. What? Because you know, there's like video footage on online where you can see Tyson t training with the great Emmanuel Stewart years and years ago. And there's an interview where Emmanuel talks about Tyson, saying, "I think your name's Tyson Deontay," as the two heavyweights to watch out for. And his prediction pretty much come true. What's your first ever memories of seeing Tyson in the cronk? They told me there's this big white boy in the gym talking about he's going to be the next heavyweight champ. That's what it was. I was training in the gym, and the guy at the front door said, hey, man, this big white boy here, he said he's going to be the next heavyweight champ of the world. He's the next heavyweight champ of the world. And I looked over at him, and I was like, and I just kept working, like, okay, like, you know. And then uh, I was introduced to him, and uh, he told me who he was and uh, mentioned Andy Lee, and Andy Lee was like a brother to me, brother, and uh, told him to go ahead and change and start working out. And I was watching him work out, and he had a... Uh, Exceptional movement, uh, athleticism for a man that that size, and I was just like, for me, it was like, all right, that's pretty good. But from where I'm from, it's like, all right, I've seen people come in and hit the bag, look brilliant. But let's see how you do when you box. So uh, he had his first chance to spar, and uh, that was his last chance to spar too, because uh, who he was sparring didn't want to spar anymore, and uh, that's history. 
Interesting, man. I want to pick your brain about uh, Prince Nassim Hamed as well. Obviously, he finished his career with Manuel as well. What's your memories of Nazi? Anything you could share with the fans that, you know? Yes, me beating him in pool. Uh, <laughs> you got to have more stories than that because Naz is a serious character. Uh, me beating him in pool. <laughs> have you had the chance we, to meet him? I, 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 we, uh, we played we play in three games, but he had to go. I beat him the first game. We're going to just say I let him beat me the second game, keep it interesting, because he, Emmanuel was training him, one of Emmanuel fighters, they didn't want to break his confidence. And uh, the third game, Emmanuel pulled him away and they had to go. And what was that like for Naz? Because Naz don't like defeat and I can imagine that must have well, been a bit awkward. It. He tasted it from me, it's no problem. Now, we had a good time. Uh, it, was, it was fun playing with him, you know, his energy, you know, his, uh, his character. Just a good, friendly person. I enjoyed being around him and, uh, you know, the same, for, the same was for him. You know, we enjoyed our, each other's company. And, uh, yeah, it was great. It was a great time back in those days uh, and, and watching him train with Emmanuel. And he was the first fighter ever that Emmanuel was saying it. Out of, he's the first little guy to make big money. I mean, he turned it out for the little guys in boxing. And that's what Emmanuel always said. He was so exciting. His ring walks, his, his, uh, you know, his interviews, his style of fighting, getting knockouts. Everybody was loving him getting knockouts from any direction with either hand. I mean, he was just such a spectacle to watch and, and so entertaining. And that's how he made it so big. And he put the little guys on the map, period. 100%, you sure did. And have you met his sons? Because one of his sons is looking to turn professional, like Adam Hamid. I have not. Okay. I've only been in uh, Manchester here for... Uh, since last night, but other than that, I've been in Markham Bay. I've been secluded away up in Markham Bay in the Lake District, Blackpool, Preston, Leeds. Having barbecues with Tyson? Up in the north, yeah, yeah. Barbecues, watching the sunset. What a beautiful thing. 100%. You know, everyone talks about the Kronk style, Detroit boxing. Is there any other fighters you can tell us to keep an eye out for? One of my personal favorites is Tony Harrison. I love watching that guy fight, and he was really unlucky in his fight with uh, one of the Charlo brothers in the rematch, but anyone else you can tell us to look out for? Uh, Detroit has a, you know, just numerous loads of talent in Detroit, and uh, it, it could be anyone. I mean, I, I can't really say who to watch out for because it's, with so much in boxing, um, the other obstacles outside of the ring that, that, that play a big factor in, uh, in people's lives. So that's that's including fighters to watch out for. You know, the only thing I can say is just you know work hard and stay focused. There are going to be obstacles in a way, but you have to, you know find a way past those things as everyone else has to do, it, even myself. So uh, the roads aren't always easy, but when you when you take those hard roads, they're most enjoyable. You know, Tony Harrison is one of those guys to, that you can look at and say, he took the hard road and uh, he's enjoying it. He sure is. I was, last question for you. I always like to ask trainers that are well respected. Who do you rate as you know, you know, other trainers around the world? If you were to name your personal top three favorite trainers or styles of training, who's your personal favorites? Uh, it's not really fair for me to say because I like all the different styles and I, I watch all the trainers. I watch every trainer and I learn something from each trainer. So I guess you could just say for me, all of boxing. That's the only way I'm going to learn is from uh, watching and, and not thinking that I know too much. That's a fair point. Anything else you want to add, well, that was, add sugar? That was killer, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I thought <laughs> you were going to say. It's true, but I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not fair for me to say some one particular person because, you know, uh, I do watch everybody. I watch the fighters too. I mean, the fighters teach me a lot. It may be a combination that I throw, and maybe I'll have you slip this way, and they might slip a different way. And I'm looking at them like, oh, wait, do that again? I'm like, wait, do it again? Oh, let's fix that for you then. So that's me learning still. Valid point. You know, from the past era, like, say, 60, 70 years ago, have you got a personal favorite fighter? I'm talking Ray about Robinson. beyond Arlie's Ray time. Robinson. Ray Robinson. That's right, Sugar Ray Robinson, the one and the only, Sugar Ray Robinson. Almost like Sugar Hill, huh? He sure is. Willie Pep's one of my personal favorites. I love Willie Pep. I like Willie Pep as well, but my all-time favorite is Sugar Ray Robinson. And uh, yeah, I guess maybe I was more led that way because that was Emmanuel's favorite fighter, Sugar Ray Robinson. So yeah, I built my life and uh, things that, that uh, I'm doing uh, and want to do around Emmanuel. And uh, yeah, just following his lead and what he taught me and how he raised me. He's done a good job. We started the conversation by introducing you as a legend. We finished talking about a legend in Ray Robinson and we'll leave it at that. And Emmanuel, so yeah. Emmanuel, yeah, thank you.